this week. It's springtime at Suzuka. The monster that made a legend. And the Haven comes to motorsport. Racers, welcome to Race Recon, your weekly rundown of motorsports, both real and virtual. I'm Kuro, your race engineer and mediocre driver, and I'm here to give you this week's report. It's a new week and we're doing another all B-roll special. Life in trying to get new ADD meds is currently kicking my ass, so here we are. This week is the final week of the update six cycle. Don't forget to complete your Builder's Cup, which will go away at the end of the week, to receive the reward 2010 Ferrari 599. If trends of the past months continue, we should hear news about what's to come in Update 7 sometime between this Wednesday and next Tuesday. I'll have the summary here when all the details become available. With the dust still settling in some places from the major game system changes that came in Update 6 and the lack of a new track, the community is expecting Update 7 to bring new content to further expand the experience. If you dig around, I'm sure you'll find some rumors and leaks already, but my personal policy is not to traffic in those, mostly because I don't have the energy or time to look up and verify the details to want to share them here. And now on to community racing. Over in the average Fuller hot lap series, Fuller has pondered the wheel and the wheel demands that we race S-Classes on VIR Grand West. Current meta cars are not allowed, and since it is an S-Class open week, we'll be discussing the status of the S-Class meta later in this video. Folks wanting to dive in have until midnight on Saturday to submit a time, and should join the average Fuller Discord community to participate. A link to the average Fuller Discord server is down in the description. First up in Wheel to Wheel series, Racing Haven have announced their first Forza Motorsport event this Tuesday. Their next event will be a GT Car Endurance Championship. Interested drivers can choose between the 2018 Mercedes AMG GT3, 2019 McLaren 720S GT3, twenty nineteen Ferrari Verisi Competizione GTE, twenty sixteen Bentley M Sport Continental GT3, twenty eighteen BMW M Motorsport M8 GTE, and twenty twenty Chevy Corvette Racing C8R. The link to the announcement post can be found in the description below, and from there you'll be able to find links to their Discord to get registered and to compete. I'm planning to give the competition a run and currently have a poll up to pick which of the GT cars I'll be driving, so head over to my Twitter and determine my fate. And then we have Tora's NAF car continuing on to its third round. Wrapping up a soggy race at Silverstone, after all the spray had settled, we have TNR Horizon leading the Americas and Amarth ruling over the EU. In team standings, LMP Esports remains dominant on both sides of the Atlantic. NAFCAR will continue on for its next race at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Circuit this Thursday. On to the weekend, we have one hour of racing starting their new season in the V8 Supercars. But before we get to the plans for the weekend, I want to acknowledge the winner of the livery contest, Pariah Wargasm with the Blown Piston Motorsports Global Motor Specialist Holden. This Saturday, the V8 Supercar season will kick off its first round at Watkins Glen on the short layout. Each round will be preceded by an hour-long open qualifying session starting at 1245 and wrapping up 15 minutes before the race, which will get underway at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Spots are still open for interested drivers to join and links to the announcement posts to join the Discord are available in the description. I'll be driving the Ford this season, and if you want to come through and catch the action, my stream will be live around noon for the final setup and practice. And we wrap up this week's community spotlight with IFEA's Trans Am Championship. This past week was the Easter break, but the series is back up and heading towards New Hampshire for the Briar Speed Tour at Grand Oak Raceway, where the race will be run on the reverse national circuit layout. Early outlooks for weather at the track are showing a high chance of a cold and wet race day, but as with all the other rounds where rain was expected, it's best to stay flexible. Come back here to catch the action in the SGT class, where stream is going to be starting around 7pm on Saturday evening. The stream will run until the end of the race and will run into my coverage of the Japanese Grand Prix that night. Now, on to real world racing. Much like the virtual series, many of the real ones were on break this past weekend as well. That is, other than the one series that probably wished they'd taken the week off. There was NASCAR at Richmond. 
Coming off a week of rough racing with very stringent officiating at Coda, where nearly 30 drivers were given drive through penalties for violating track limits at the S's, inconsistent race officiating spoiled the short track outing. Richmond sets up a potential for interesting strategies to form. The rough road surface of the old track means teams have to decide between two or three stops during the stage, trading track position for pace. The first stage of the race would start under damp conditions, making this NASCAR's first wet weather race on an oval. Previously, NASCAR didn't have any wet running tires, and the new rubber let the race get underway with only a 15 minute delay. It led to a bit of sluggish running during the first stage, but the race did start. In the second stage, the drying conditions let the normal Richmond strategy start to come out, but a questionable caution landed badly for the teams attempting longer runs, bunching the field and killing any advantage they'd earned. In the next stage, all the teams attempting the two-stop strategy reverted to the three-stop strategy in order to avoid officiators killing the strategy. Though that wasn't the only questionable incident with big impact. The race would go to overtime where Denny Hamlin would jump the restart and end up ultimately taking the race home. That night, Fox refused to show any telemetry and NASCAR didn't deem it necessary for a review. Just a great way to leave a good impression, right? But the show goes on. This weekend, NASCAR proceeds on to Martinsville for the first race of their two races of the year. Also this weekend, next up in the Ruin Your Sleep World Tour, we have F1 in Japan. And with this year's rescheduling of the race outside of Japan's monsoon season, we have the potential for having a good race at Suzuka this weekend. With last week's mechanical DNF and Ferrari's 1-2 finish, Red Bull and Max Verstappen are only four points clear of Ferrari and Leclerc. Will anyone be able to challenge Red Bull's on-track dominance, or will it be another year of racing for second? This week, we can find out together, as for the first time in the F1 season, I'll be trying to host a watch-along, as well as host some support events on Forza Motorsport. So, if you want to join the No Sleep Club with me, swing by Friday and Saturday night. I'll either be racing uh, the Mazda Hopper, or I'll just be getting some folks together that are interested to run some events that come to my mind. Who knows, if we get enough folks together, maybe we can make this something official that'll follow the F1 races wherever we can. So be sure to like this video and subscribe so that you can get notifications when I drop a schedule for this weekend. Looking forward to the next races in the other series that we follow. Trans Am will be at NOLA on the 11th. IMSA will be at the Long Beach Grand Prix on the 21st along with IndyCar. And the World Endurance Challenge will be at Imola on the 21st. So look forward to catching some racing with you all this month. Now on to this week in Forza Motorsport, starting off with the big money car pass gang. We have another entry into the Grand Prix Rivals category with the 1986 Lotus 98T. Built by Lotus during their reconstruction years after the passing of Colin Chapman, the number 12 was helmed by the legendary Ayrton Senna in his sophomore year with the team. He was able to take the car to eight pole positions and eight podiums in that year. The car was the last of the unrestricted turbo monsters, with the Renault power plant in full qualifying party mode capable of producing a reported 1300 brake horsepower and a more modest 850 horsepower in race trim. We'll have to see what customization options are available once it lands in the game. The car is in the black and gold with the John Player special livery, but as cigarette marketing is not endorsed in game, we have the Laurel Reef livery which was ran in places where tobacco advertisement was banned. I look forward to seeing how it competes against his more modern class compatriots and the fun Senna on Senna challenges that can be done in the class with the Ferrari, McLaren, GP rivals. On to feature rivals. This week is the final week of the GT Special Rivals division. The field is currently led by the Lamborghini Ascenza SCV12 of Vanquish FRC, followed by the Cadillac CTS Trans Am car from Forza Europa, and the Corvette C8 of TPR Bowcat. It'll be interesting to hear how people engage with this event. Did people really push the pace? Was it a challenge taken seriously? And could Turn 10 possibly use this to improve the category's balance? Maybe setting up a rotating monthly hopper to check in on the BOP of the different open lobby hoppers would be useful to make the game a more enjoyable experience. One can only dream. For the future multiplayer, we roll the clock forward from the 50s and 60s of the vintage Le Mans prototype series to the Y2K era of the early LMP series. I'd normally like to give more detail on the interest of the class, notably the Toyota TS01 and the Bentley Speed 8, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to direct you over to this short documentary about the Bentley Speed 8. Go enjoy. That is after you finish this video, of course. In this week's spotlight, we have the Lamborghini Huracan, taking us up to 10 cylinders in the combustion tour. Those that are up to date with the tour will be able to unlock the Zonda Cinque Roadster this week, but if you're not up to date, there's no need to rush. You have until the 17th of April to complete the tour. And while the spotlight may only go to 10, this week's open class series goes all the way to 12. We'll be racing S-Class cars with 12 cylinders head to head. 
In overall rival standing, we've seen that the Porsche 911 GT1 has had a slight erosion of its lead from its dominance in the previous weeks and a shuffling of the order for the rest of the cars. With the 2018 Exomotive Exocet stepping up into the second position and the McLaren F1 GT maintaining its position in third. But most relevant to this week, the McLaren F1 GT is the most performant of all the cars on the list. And then followed by the Jaguar XJR15 and the Ferrari 512S. And slowing things down a bit, we look to the E-Class. And for the first time since collecting this data, we have seen a Mazda MX-5 dethroned in a category. But it is dethroned by its Zoom Zoom compatriot in the Mazda Cosmo. It's a close battle at the lead of the field, but it's an even closer battle for the third through fifth positions. This battle for third includes the Porsche 550S, Honda S800, and the 1965 Mini Cooper. As previously noted as well, performance at Le Mans and other top-end tracks can be found in the muscle cars, represented by the 1968 Ford Mustang and the Holden Monaro. And that wraps us up for this week. I'll be looking forward to when and what Forza announces for Update 7 coming out next week. And I look forward to seeing you on the track. And remember, race safe, race smart. We're out. Yeah, 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 yeah.